And then click this button and say, yo, what up? Kubara, Spirited Warrior. It's a very divisive character. I'm going to go ahead and start the poll. I'm going to start the I'm going to start the poll now so that I can talk about Kubara. <clears throat> 5 hand size, 33 health, has earth, fire and good. It says response after your non-throw attack deals damage, build one foundation from your discard pile that shares two or more symbols with this character. Period. Just build a card. Enhance, commit a foundation colon. This deck gets minus one damage. This enhance is playable any number of times this enhance step. And then enhance, if you have 15 or less health, your attack gets three damage. So I like this character a lot. I like this character a lot. The number one thing that this character needs is he needs the w a way to land moves. He is a five hand size do nothing character if you can't land your attacks. And the easiest way for your five hand size do nothing characters to land attacks that give plus three damage is to play throws. And this right here really, really hurts this character. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. If you can figure out how to land the moves with Kurabara, I think he's very good. You have to draw the moves. You have to land the moves. Let's see if his kit helps us solve these two problems. With first off, Bending Blade. Uh, it's a 5-3. Two mid block as a weapon keyword. Um, enhance if you have not dealt damage this turn. Change the zone of this deck. You can be low or high. And then enhance, this deck cannot be partially blocked. Again, this is how we land that move, right? Um, we do a bit of a zone mix-up. I want, I need my move to be a low or a high, depending. I say that you have to, f you have to full block it if you block it. It can't be partially blocked, um, which then lands my thing, and then I get to, I get to do it, right? It's, it makes it the opposite of a throw. You have to full block it, or you don't even get to attempt to. It's also a five diff, five mid for six. These are not bad stats for a five diff, truthfully, right? We just saw we just saw an ultra rare that was printed five for five, um, so being five for six that like sometimes is a five for nine. If I'm like half dead, it's pretty good. It's pretty okay. This having the hidden text of sometimes it will build you a foundation. This card is this card is good. Um, it is like how do I how do I get it to land? Next, we have the rare. It is Desperate Slash. 5-3, uh, three, 3 high for a 3 with a 1 high block. Has Fury Weapon. If you're at 10 or less health, this deck gets minus 1 difficulty and plus 1 damage. So it is a 3 diff, 3 high for 4. It says Mill 3. This deck gets 1 speed, 1 damage for each foundation milled this way. Damn, Dole! Thank you so much. Why no desperation keyword? Nah, we don't do that here. Um, those, those, That's reserved for, for other cards. <laughs> um, I like this card a lot. I think the mill three on it has the potential to be to, to just uh, Yahtzee you. Um, we've 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 all been Yahtzeed by the mill three on um, Frigid Heat Wave before, and it's way way harder to Yahtzee on that card than it is to Yahtzee on the other way with mill three foundations. So four diff, six high for six a lot of times. Sometimes it's a three diff, six high for seven. Um, very, very scary three diffs. And if you're Kurabara, it's not a six high uh, for seven. It's a six high for ten three diff. Just like when, when you when you walk through when you walk through all the steps of like what Desperate Slash does, when you take a snapshot, this card looks bad. But when you take and like start doing the enhances and start counting the math and doing all the all the the, the extra bonus stuff, I think this card is good. I think this card's playable. It got a good one high block. I like this. Card. And if it hits, I build a foundation because I'm Kurabara. It's neat. It's neat. Next, we have Dimension Sword. Um, it's a 4-3 with a 2-low block. 3 mid for 4. Has Breaker 1. Great keyword. Ranged weapon. Enhance. Mill 3. Add a weapon attack. Mill this way to your hand. At the very beginning of this, I said Kuobar's big issue is he's going to have a problem drawing the attack cards and then landing the attack cards. We've seen cards that uh, help you land. This is one of the cards that lets you just find foundations. And then choose a foundation in your stage. This deck gets speed, uh, one speed for each symbol that it, it shares with your character. So this is just this is just a six mid for four. The six mid for four that goes and finds you a move. 
it hits, and so I get to build in additional card because I'm Kuwabara. And sometimes it's a six mid for seven because I am at half health. I think this character is going to be uh, is going to want to like really leverage um, how much damage he takes to try and get down to 15 and then just stay there, right? I'm gonna get to 15 and then I'll be, I'm good. Um, I'll block. I'll have built up enough resources and so on and so forth. Um, I do wish that he was um, he was after a non-throw attack deals damage so that whenever I damage reduced, I got to build in these foundations um, that shared two or more symbols with my character. We wouldn't have a recovery girl issue because of like the, the symbol restriction that, that we have, but it would be it would be very cool to, to have it. Is there any life gain on these symbols? I'm sure there's life gain on these symbols. I'm sure. Um, it might not be amazing, but it, I'm, I'm sure it's there. I think this card is I think this card is fine. Um, I kind of wish that it had just one more stat somewhere else, right? Um, if it was like a three, uh, a three for five or a four for four, I think I'd have been I'd have been a little bit happier. But we'll move on. Spirit Sword Swipe, uh, four three with a one mid block, incredible block. Uh, three low for four, stun one, weapon. This is fine. It's it's just a common easy peasy. Um, not, not a ton to say about this a beautiful one, one mid block. It's a decent stun card. It's fine. And cooler bar, sometimes it's a seven damage move and that's pretty okay. <laughs> move on to the next one. We have the uncommon, uh, double sword style. It's a two, five with a three mid block response. Once per turn tenacious after this foundation is committed due to a cost, this deck is plus one or minus one damage. That's where this ability really comes in. I think having a bunch of these cards is really, really good. And then response flip after you play your second attack this turn, draw one card. Um, I wish that they were both tenacious so that I could, I would feel comfortable committing it. Um, uh, I, well, I guess I'd want to flip it on my turn and then commit it on their turn. So, like, I commit it to say that I get another turn, and then on my turn, the turn that I want to go in, I like I get the double sword style. Um, yeah, this card, this card is is very good. Um, I think it's just a four of in every Kuobara because, like, after it's committed, another minus one damage um, or the plus one, um, I can just like do this over and over and over again. This card's good. This card's good. Uh, kind. Hearted one five two mid block response. After you build this card, reveal the top card of your deck. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. So the obvious play that we have here is with Kuabara, right? I hit and then I build this card in. Uh, sorry, we're here. I I hit. I build this card in because it shares symbols. I draw. I look at the top card. Draw a card. Discard a card. The other thing is, is I hit. I reveal the top card of my deck. It's a foundation. I know that I'm passing my next check. I'm essentially uh, uh, Genkai. Or better yet, I play this for my hand in anybody, any character. I play it for my hand. I build it during the end phase. Because it doesn't say if after you build this card during the combat phase. You build it during the end phase, and now you get to be Kamui Woods, where you just get a bonus review, and you get to look at the card. Oh, I'll look at the top card of my deck. That's a better block than what I have. All right, I'll... I'll discard this card and then and then draw a card. The other thing, oh, it says you may discard one card if you do draw a card. Oh, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. My brain, my brain said, my brain said um, that uh, you just like got to, you didn't have to discard the card. Whew, that was silly. I was thinking this had a keyword a moment for for Momo, but nah. Also, Momo's rotating. She's out of here. We don't care about her anymore. Old news. Old news, but no, I'm, there's there's so many there's so many of these characters that are that are super down to after they build this card to like get a full value out of it. I I I, I like this card a lot. I think this card's very very neat. Is it gonna be a four of an in every single character? No, probably not. But it's cool. It's cool. Up next we have the rare, the power of love. It's a three five two high block with the ally uh, keyword. Um, Response Tenacious, so playable while committed, destroy. After Rival plays a non-character ability that cancels your enhance or responsibility, cancel it. Hey, you mess with my thing, I'm going to tell you no to that. You say no to me, no, no, no. I say no to you. I'm the one who says no here. And then Enhance, Commit, Seal 1, Rival, Death, Evil, 
or Void Foundation. It's essentially, it's essentially replacing um, Irrefutable Force of Nature in this uh, in this Foundation Enhanced Commit slot, and Todoroki gets to play it. Todoroki Four still gets to play it under the Fire Symbol. This does mean that in in like Retro, Todoroki now has access to twelve Foundations that do this ceiling idea. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, anti League of Villains. Ooh, it does say CO one Foundation, and not one. Oh, you mean for the cancel? Yeah, you're totally right, Kit Kart, Kit Kat. After my opponent responds with the League of Villains, I get to I get to cancel it with the power of love as a playable abil uh, committed ability. Yeah, I think not a card that you're gonna uh, play at at a, at a huge number. Um, there's probably just gonna be like a two of in most decks. But depending on how how big cancels are, um, we could see more. We'll move on to the last card. In Kubar's kit, thinking on the fly is a two-five-two low block response flip. After your attack is blocked, your next attack gets three speed. Again, at the very end, I said this guy had to do two things: he had to draw cards, he had to land moves. If you block my attack, my next one's gonna get through, especially if it's if it's got a bunch of speed on it from already itself, right? You you blocked my my. Five mid for for a nine. Well, now this one starts as a six for seven because of Kuwabara, and it gets an extra three three. I'm gonna land. I'm gonna get my build. The other thing about thinking on the on the fly is if there are any ways for you to destroy foundations after you flip your thinking on the fly, you destroy it, put it in your discard pile, you hit, and then you build it back in. It also says if it's blocked, your next one gets plus three. Not if it's completely blocked. So if they partially block your move, you get to build in thinking on the fly with Kuwabara. Or I guess, I guess, no, you'd have to respond with thinking first, and then you'd get to to build in. Because Kuwabara is on damage. Yeah, so block would happen first. Either way, they, they, when they, when they partial, you get to build this in, and then on the next one you get to do stuff. It's, uh, I like this card so close, so close for the, for the correct timing. Um, I'll, I dig this card. I think this card's gonna see a lot of play. Um, we already see how good cards like um, um, elasticity do, right? The um, uh, if this deck's blocked, plus three minus three damage. Um, and speed is just a better stat than damage. So I, I, I am, I'm here for it. My question, though, you guys, is: Do you like Kuwabara's kit? Do you like the thing that the things that Kuwabara are doing? My personal opinion is I think he's an interesting character. I don't know how competitive he is, but I think he's going to be really, really fun to play at, like, a locals level. Um, maybe whenever we take and we go back in time and we look at all of the ideas that uh, that, that have existed under the, um, the Earth, um, Fire, and Good symbols, it's possible that he just, like, builds 100 cards very quickly. His damage reduction is actually real. Um, and he's able to find some some pretty decent uh, decent moves. Um, uh, it might be that like he's able to 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 burn himself down to fifteen very quickly, and then with all the damage reduction that he finds, um, he stays there. And so like giving your uh, uh, playing cards like Tetra Terror Onslaught um, is like good enough, right? Um, glad self sacrifice is leaving with him coming in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in Deadlock, this man is evil. I think he's, I mean, he just scales really well with, like, you just want to have a thousand foundations on your board, right? Um, he is a character that feels, like, eventually critical mass. I don't have to block anything anymore. Um, I can just, like, commit my five foundations, so your five damage move doesn't matter. Um, I will say, this guy might get chewed up by hilariously chew, right? I have eight foundations. I don't block your five damage move. I just die, <laughs> um, and so like it doesn't matter what I damage reduce it at, reduce it to. I just didn't block it, so I, I lost the game. Uh, but YouTube frogs, let me know what you guys think in the uh, in the comments down below. Would love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions on the third uh, member of Team Urameshi.